uh, Gohar is going to talk about Metaport.ai, the company that she founded. And I, you know, I don't think I'm going to even do this justice, but it's it's kind of like a way to um, empower storytelling among everyone and tie it to locations, and then in the roadmap thinking about how to use augmented reality as part of that. So, um, Gohar, I will turn the floor over to you. Thank you. Let me share my screen. So um, it's not a technical product that I'm going to talk about. Um, this starts very uh, emotionally for me, how the product idea came to me. So um, I was born in Armenia. And a um, couple of years ago, I was at the cemetery in our village with my mom. And we stumbled upon this uh, gravestone that we had no idea existed. And apparently this is the uh, tombstone of my great grandfather that um, neither my mom nor I had any idea about. And the reason why we didn't know anything about him because he worked for the Tsar uh, back in uh, Russian empire. And uh, once the uh, Bolsheviks reached Armenia my great grandfather was killed and uh, the family was uh, forced to denounce him, to change their last names and completely forget about his existence. And if you can see on this photograph, there are even bullet holes on, uh, on the stone because people apparently have shot at it. Um, so this is my great grandfather on the left. And this is Tsar Nicholas II. And my great grandfather was uh, taking minutes of the meetings for Tsar's delegation in the Caucasus, which included Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and even uh, some events he was at, for some events he was in Iran and uh, Turkey. So he spoke five or six languages, uh, had a beautiful handwriting and Apparently his uh, handwriting was perused by the Tsar himself. So I was so affected by this story because uh, I felt like I was robbed out of my own ancestry. You know, I, I grew up, I was 40 something years old without any knowledge or where my, what my great grandfather was doing and uh, what's my heritage. So I was thinking that imagine if anyone was standing in front of the uh, uh, Winter Palace in St. Petersburg and could somehow access any information among other people, uh, uh, also my great grandfather's story, you know, and read about him, how he spoke so many languages back in the late 1800s, and maybe see his um, handwriting or letters that were handwritten by him. And um, so this is how I got the idea. And um, Metaport was born. So uh, Metaport is a platform that allows you to uh, share stories about your ancestors and tie and pin them on a map. Um, so I think that there hasn't been a community-led approach to collect and preserve the history of our cities and uh, the dwellers. And, um, but besides this, there are a lot of online resources, like people post stuff on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, or there's uh, thousands of pages that have been researched on architecture and history, but these stories are inaccessible for a tourist who is standing in front of a beautiful building and wants to learn something about it. So I think this is very important because when we learn about people's stories, uh, it, helps, uh, it helps us connect with them and it reaches, enriches our experience as tourists. So um, I think that every building inherits a story of uh, the people and families that live there so um, I want to um, open a window into every building's past, if I can say that. So um, our pilot city is Tbilisi, which is in Georgia, Republic of Georgia. 
And um, within a month, we have about 500 submissions from just anyone who lives in the city. And uh, people share the pictures of their great grandparents, uh, tell us what happened to them. You know, most of the stories are very identical because all the wealthy people have been exiled after the revolution. Um, and um, <clears throat> besides um, being a crowdsourcing platform, we are also um, allowing uh, Metaport, which is gonna have a, an artificial intelligence very soon, we are allowing it to um, share not just a, a location specific story with you, but like what happened in this location. For example, when Tchaikovsky lived in Tbilisi in this one specific house that you see in the picture, he was working on um, his violin concerto his most famous violin concerto. And he kept sending letters to the Tsar Nicholas I, insisting that the city needs an opera house. So uh, not very many people know about this, including Georgians who've been born and raised in the city and have no clue that this actually happened. Uh, and then let's, let's come to UC Berkeley. Imagine you're standing in front of the uh, student union building and being able to look at chronography of the university or just one building. And I don't think many people know who go to UC Berkeley that Milos uh, was standing at the balcony of the student union when he received his Nobel prize and here you can see him being photographed by the journalists or uh, Martin Luther King giving his uh, speech in front of the building when he was visiting UC Berkeley campus. Um, so um, I feel that education doesn't have to start inside the university building. It can start even on the campus, you can be sitting on a bench or on the grass at a lawn and just go on your phone and learn about um, the former students, former faculty, professors, sharing stories about the campus. Or the same thing can be done when you're traveling and visiting Venice or Paris or any other city. You know, you can look at the building and be able to um, see when it was, um, when is the earliest documented fact about the building and keep scrolling up until our days, which movies uh, were made in this building, you know, who lived there, what kind of stories are associated with it. Um, the market opportunity for this app is huge. Uh, you know, in 2019, I don't have more recent data because the travel hasn't been the same but in 2019, there were 2.4 billion arrivals, international arrivals all over the world. And uh, we just did the math for Barcelona. Uh, and imagine if 20% of visitors use our app when it's ready and purchase like minimum $4 worth something, you know, a, a self-guided tour or any, you know, anything. Um, it's gonna be, the revenue is gonna be 2.4 million per city. Um, so we have pretty amazing following in Tbilisi. We have 70,000 followers on our page and our group, Facebook group. And um, we don't like to, we, we like to call the data that we're collecting perceptive. It's uh, user generated. You can share stories about people, buildings, landmarks, businesses. You can share the story of your business, it, or it can be a statue or, uh, or a river or something, a lake that's anything has been associated with it. Uh, there's third party data, archives, historic research, encyclopedia. And so when we combine all of this uh, and we combine AR, at the end, we have uh, Metaport. 
So this is the Bilisi. You can see most of the submissions that happen within one month. And um, this is uh, people sharing about their grandparents. Or if they don't have the grandparent story, they uh, photograph, they just share a picture of the building. And uh, at the end, if these walls could talk, I wonder what secrets they'll tell. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Gohar. That was fantastic. Thank you. And uh, and you soon are going to have it available on a phone, so someone could actually do it walking around Berkeley. It might be their grandparents, or it might be, you know, their own story of what happened to them, right? At, right. at the university. Yeah. Or... Mm -hmm. So if you feel inspired, please go ahead and share some interesting stories on our platform. It's metaport.ai. And so let's open it for questions for Gohar. I have a question, Gohar. This is really an awesome uh, story and product. This is really exciting. It seems like uh, the main consumers of this would be, you talked about like tourism, maybe in the classroom, things like that. I was wondering, how are you getting the word out about people to submit content to this? Are you partnering with any historical societies or museums or how are you um, asking people to participate in this project? So uh, we only started to do this in Tbilisi and we are reaching out to our followers on Facebook and people who like the page and they see it. Um, we haven't reached out to global um, network yet, but um, the plan is to do it once we're out of Skydeck. So we're sort of testing it in the Belize, trying to learn how's it going, how's the submission process, is it too long? You know, we want to reduce all the clicks for the users, you know, to make it seamless. And uh, once we're ready, I think we'll just approach a lot of historic and architectural societies, uh, city halls in the US and just see how it goes. Are you gonna go like city by city or will you kind of do just like a widespread um, for any, anybody to submit? Um, anybody can submit even now, but the idea is, um, so what happened, I mean, once we were working with this platform, we had no idea that there's gonna be war in Ukraine. And a lot of Ukrainians moved to Georgia because it's a very friendly country. It's again, former Soviet country. And uh, um, so some of the Ukrainians who fled to Georgia, they discovered about the platform. And I was approached by a very large uh, Ukrainian nonprofit asking me to um, help them put all the cultural and historic locations on the map. So there's a very uh, organized effort happening at the moment. It's not live, it's not on the map, it's in a sort of a stealth mode, but um, they feel that they're not only fighting a real war and cyber war, they now have to fight a cultural war between uh, with Russia because um, apparently, Putin claims that Ukraine never existed. It was a make-believe country. So, um, and I feel that once we uh, publish this uh, on Ukraine and people start advertising this, um, there will be, this will go viral, you know, because this will uh, create a lot of awareness. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I see a question in the chat, um, so great idea. How do you plan to validate or cross check some of the user entries? Um, so on the model of the Belisi, uh, it's very interesting because uh, when people uh, share stories about their grandparents and they say somebody owned a house, it's very easy to check, to verify because all the homeowners were being, have been registered in catalogs during the Imperial Russian period. So it's, it's very easy to do. Um, and I think 
in all of the Soviet, former Soviet space, it's gonna be fairly easy uh, to check the, uh, the information, but we cannot verify stories. You know, if somebody's grandmother says that she had coffee on her balcony with Stalin, we cannot verify this because none of them are alive or this hasn't been published anywhere, you know, so, um, but some things we can verify. Thank you. Um, I see that somebody, oh, I see Bill is suggesting, would you use a community review process like Wikipedia? That's an interesting uh, thought, Bill. About this, yes, uh, a good question. We're, we're definitely going to implement that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bill, that's a good point. It would be good um, for scaling. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Um, it looks like, Tomer, you put a link in the chat. Would you like to say something about that? Yeah, I just, um, I, I heard about this a while back and I just did a quick Google. It looks like there's, there are a lot of initiatives to 3D uh, archive uh, a lot of the monuments uh, and buildings and, um, and, and sites, historical sites in Ukraine. Uh, I do have a friend of mine that is actually involved in that initiative as well. Uh, but uh, I, I just love the app. Gohar, thank you so much for presenting this. It just, uh, I can relate. So I appreciate it. I will sign up. <laughs> thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. You. And please connect me with your friend because we're doing this like as, if we can collect as much information on Ukraine, it's better, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I see Malcolm says you mentioned in-app purchases. Can you give some examples of what you are thinking? Uh, so there's going to be uh, self-guided tours. We are going to have curators in each city. Uh, curators meaning former tour agency employees or tour guides. Uh, they will curate uh, interesting uh, self-guided tours that you can download on your phone and just follow it. Because I personally, I, don't, I, I love taking my own time and walking at my own pace rather than uh, being in a group of tourists who are very disorganized or um, the tour guide is running and you have to catch up with them all the time. You know, so um, the, and there are more opportunities to sell things, but uh, this is what we're gonna start with, self-guided tours. But I mean, this, the sky is the limit. We can do so much with this data once we accumulate it. Absolutely. Um, Malcolm's also thinking about connecting to genealogy databases could also be interesting. Yes, I think we're, we're going to try to get in touch with Ancestry.com when we have enough following or enough like, uh, you know, um, users, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's nice. definitely on our list. <laughs> Excellent. Um, any other questions for Gohar? Last call. I see Bill is saying this app is almost like Ancestry.com for cities. I like it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> the location because um, the stories are there, but for some reason the locations have been ignored. You know, and mm -hmm. I feel that this is uh, such an important thing to give life to uh, buildings and houses because. Uh, it's like, there, there is no way to find any information. Even if I go out at UC Berkeley and I stand in front of a building, like Google is not helping you. Mm -hmm. if you don't know the name of the building or even if you know the name. And, uh, you know, especially in countries that they don't use English alphabet on the street names, right? Mm -hmm. You see a building, you see there's a, there's a street name in a foreign language and you have no idea how to Google anything. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, I see the suggestion Snapchat has some similar features with Stories Heat Map. Have you thought about collaborating with them? I, I haven't thought about it, but it's a good point. I'm gonna write it down. Thank you. Yeah, because they also provide like, a, so on Snapchat, it's like kind of similar to your user interface, but heat maps of what's popping and you can click into them and see live stories happening, which is almost like a, a compliment to, to what's happened before and what's happening now. Okay. I, think, I think it'll be fun to see like a before and now, like it's people partying now, but before it was like a library. Or... 
And this is actually one of the things I love about Skydeck because I can tell like you're both up there in the penthouse and this is like a lot of uh, startups end up helping each other like in their sort of journeys of bringing these things to market. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of trading of ideas. At least I think you're up there, Richard. You were, you were yeah. kind of- Yeah, that's <laughs> what it's all about. Yeah. Love it. And would you also well, consider yeah. other like form of medias? So beside pictures? I think I heard like metaverse, like VR, or like Definitely. videos. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Well, thank you, Gohar. That was really, really lovely to hear about your startup. I love this idea. Um, you really kind of touched me personally. My partner is actually of Armenian heritage. And so a lot of thinking about displaced people and history in our household as well. And I really just, um, I think that's very, very beautiful and useful what you're working on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And so thank you, Gohar. And then I want to also thank Richard Allen and Sanjun uh, and everybody for turning out today. We will post the videos online on the CTO website and on YouTube, and we will um, see you next month. So by the time we meet next month, semester will have started. So thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of your summer, and we will see you next month. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone.